Antonio, it's great to have you back. Given some of the pressures uh, others have seen in the space, you talk about a cost structure that's right-sized, a pretty good order book. Is macro less of a concern for you right now? Well, Carl, good morning. Thank you for having me. You know, HP had an outstanding quarter. We delivered record-breaking performance across the key metrics. This was the most profitable quarter in the history of our company. We delivered record-breaking uh, free cash flow and as well as EPS. Um, but also we had the second highest ever revenue quarter. And I'm really pleased with the momentum we have in the market. You know, the demand for our products uh, and solutions, particularly on the platform, now called HP GreenLake, is enduring, is steady. And I think this is a culmination of several actions we have taken over a number of quarters. Number one, right size in the company uh, for where we want to spend our time and energy, particularly in high growth areas with high gross margin. Number two is our strategy. Our strategy is taking flight, is resonating with customers. That's why we have this impressive order demand, particularly on the HP Green Lake side. But we had an amazing quarter as well on the edge and compute and storage. And then ultimately, uh, as we, we look forward, we believe we are really well positioned to capitalize on those customer needs. So we had an amazing uh, quarter. We executed exceptionally well. It does uh, raise the question, though, if the macro backdrop darkens uh, significantly, does that work you've already done allow you to play defense for longer or go on the offense and start trying to take some share? Well, we are gaining share. In fact, our performance in Q4 says that we have gained share in compute, we have gained share in networking, and we are really positioned to deliver an amazing performance in storage and in the data space. So we are going on the offense because we believe our portfolio is uniquely positioned from edge to cloud in a platform-centric model that drives recurrent revenue and profitable growth for our shareholders. And this is the, an opportunity for us. You know, we have worked really hard over the last two years post-pandemic to pivot the company and to deliver value for our shareholders. And you see the numbers in Q4. So we are really confident about the guidance we get for 2023. And that's why our Q1 guidance probably surprised many people because we have that momentum. Antonio, um, as the supply picture has shifted, right, uh, and the consumer market has weakened, you guys... Uh, yeah. have gotten better access to components that you need. How are you managing that and making sure that you don't, you know, as now demand in the overall global economy slows down, don't get stuck with inventory that's hard to move? Well, we took uh, uh, inventory action starting the back half of 2021 where we start seeing the challenges with some components, particularly in the old node technology type of components. And now in Q4, we already reached the peak of the inventory and actually we reduced some of the inventory by about $400 million. And because of our significant order book, which by the way is larger than we had at the end of 2022, we are going to see that improving uh, working capital coupled with earning power and also the fact that we have done all the strategic actions that obviously incur some expense. We're going to see that tremendous momentum of the free cash flow. That's why we guided the street for that $1.9 billion to $2.1 billion. So we think we are extremely well positioned to take advantage of the demand and reduce that inventory and drive the operating leverage through cash flow from operations.